Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Matthew. In this video, we go through Cauchy's theorem, the statement, proof and geometrical meaning. Okay, so uh, in we saw Rolle's theorem, we saw Lagrange's theorem and this one is supposed to be even extended version of the Lagrange's theorem or some people use this for parametric form of functions. So here we have two functions f of x and g of x. And I'll put it like this, um, you should use this video only after studying Rolle's and Lagrange's properly because we prove this just like we proved Lagrange's theorem and we proved Lagrange using Rolle's theorem. So let f of x and g of x be two functions which satisfy the conditions just like Rolle's and Lagrange continuous in the closed interval. Second one, um, what you call differentiable in the open interval. And by now you know very well continuous means the graph will not break. And differentiable means at each and every point in the graph, the gradient of the tangent or the slope of the tangent is defined. And we can calculate. Okay. And if the two conditions are satisfied, then Cauchy tells us that there will be at least one point. There will be at least one point between A and B, namely C. In such a way that F dash of C by G dash of C is equal to FB minus FA by GB minus GA. There is one more as assumption. The derivative should be of the derivative of G should not be equal to zero. Uh, anywhere inside A and B. Otherwise, there will be indeterminates. That's why they give that condition. Um, okay, now let's go for the proof itself. So, just like Lagrange's theorem, what we do is we create a function. So, what do we do? We create a function, uh, what we call capital F of X. Here, we use the function to be small f of X plus k times g of x. Do you remember in uh, Lagrange's theorem we used k multiplied by x. Here we are using the same function from uh, like what you call the statement. Now look at this. According to Cauchy's mean value theorem conditions. What is condition number one? f and g are continuous. Now look at this. If you add two continuous functions it will still be continuous. And multiplication by a number doesn't affect continuity. Okay, non-zero number. Now, second one, differentiable. Same story. Differentiability will not be affected. And now, what I'm going to do is, just like in Lagrange's theorem, I'm going to find a value for k in such a way that f of a equal to f of b. Look at this. I am wondering when will f of a be equal to f of b. So now you got the idea. So I am creating a function capital F of x which will satisfy all the conditions of Rolle's mean value theorem. So that I can apply Rolle's theorem. Now f of a equal to f of b means come on what is f of a? f of a plus k into g of a is equal to f of b plus k times g of b. I am repeating once more. Uh, don't watch this proof until you have uh, like what you call watch the proof of Lagrange's theorem because it's kind of like similar. So we get k into g a minus g b is equal to f b minus f a or k becomes f b minus f a by I am just telling the same stuff we did in Lagrange's theorem. It becomes negative GB minus GA. The conclusion is, if you put K is equal to this, then capital F of X will satisfy all the conditions of Rolle's theorem. Now, Rolle's has given us one guarantee. What's the guarantee? In between A and B, there will be at least one point where the derivative of f will vanish. So look at this. Capital F of x satisfies all the conditions of Rolle's theorem. So in between A and B, I will be able to find a point C where the derivative will vanish. Now, 
This is very very easy. What is the derivative of capital F? Capital F dash x equal to the derivative of small f is f dash x plus constant into function. You keep the constant, differentiate the function. So what will be the derivative at the particular point C? That will be f dash of C plus yeah. So all you have to do is you write that f dash of C plus k times g dash of c is equal to 0. So k is equal to um, minus f dash of c by g dash of c. Manipulating a little bit, f dash of c by g dash of c is equal to minus k and you know the k value. That's it. Now remember the logic behind the proof I have explained here but when you go for an exam you should practice practice so that you'll be confident for the exam so i'll be back with another video very soon so till then my friends bye